a cordless angle grinder, a miniature cordless angle grinder from eBay with two batteries and a charger shipped for less than £16. What could go wrong? And this was shipped within the UK. Let's take a look what we get. We have the angle grinder itself that looks like this. We have an extra disc. There, there were two shipped this. I put one of them on. We have the two batteries. Here's one and here's one that has been opened because I've already had a wee peek inside for reasons that will become apparent. We have the charger, which is a UK compliant square. Well, not UK compliant. It's a UK fitting one. And we have a little Allen key for changing those um, discs if needs be. OK, let's explore. So when I first got this, the first thing I did was check the voltage in the batteries. The voltage in the batteries was good. Didn't really need charged or did they? I put it in and this is where it is going to work. Because it didn't when I got it. But the batteries have since been charged up further. So I'm going to turn this on. I should have warned you, lots of noise. But here it is, spinning disc and a battery indicator. And does a splendid job of slicing holes in the bench. However, when I first got it, let me see if I can emulate this by running it for a while. One moment, please. And this is what happens when things aren't going to plan. Did you see the disc spin briefly and the lights flash briefly? But it's not, it's not working every time. There is a reason for this, and it, it's a very silly reason. It's because somebody decided to cheap out. Imagine that. And initially, neither of these batteries would work. I couldn't get it to run at all. But I got another power tool. A Chinese cordless ratchet. And I popped the battery out of this one into that one and suddenly it worked. And I ran it for a while. Maybe it just needed loosened up, although it wasn't that tight. It, was, it just felt freewheeling. And it kind of solved the problem. And I charged these batteries up to full whack, right up to the maximum voltage and it kind of solved the problem until it's warmed up and then it does it again. That must be why it was cheap. So the reason I reckon it's doing this is because the initial standing start of this uh, unit, even without the disc, the current was so high that it was actually causing the batteries to go into lockout mode because they saw the very high current pulse. And that is, well, I can show you, I'll show you the circuitry of the batteries. But I'll do it right now because I've already taken the picture. That's why this one is open. So I'll just put this one to the side. Oh, here's the listing, by the way, that I got this from. And I'll conveniently focus down onto that. And it describes it as Cutter Cordless Mini Angle Grinder Polishing 2 Battery Charger Brushed 19,500 RPM. I don't know where my uh, counter is. Otherwise, I could have actually measured the speed. Comes with two batteries, two discs, the charger, and the unit itself. In blue or yellow, Makita blue, or DeWalt yellow, or I could, pot, well, they didn't have it. Uh, I, I could have got Milwaukee red, but in the end, I ended up getting DeWalt yellow. It just seemed, it just seemed the right choice of colour. In the battery, they have skimped slightly. So here is the circuit board in the battery. Let me just whip this off so you can see the actual circuit board in the battery. The chip is a GW8023N. I drew a blank on that, but I did find the data sheet for another chip that is similar functionality, but a different pinout. So what we have in here, we have the charging port, we have the two outputs. We've got the negative output to the tool and the positive output to the tool. And this one, which is deceivingly marked T, uh, should be marked C because it's actually the charging input. And it is common with the negative on this um charging port over here and there is a diode and then a MOSFET that allows the charging so when you plug it into charge it senses that the charge charger is active it turns on this MOSFET and it lets you put current into the lithium cells but when it reaches when the first cell of the three reaches 4.2 volts it basically turns this MOSFET off because it's reached maximum charge. And likewise, the only time this MOSFET, which is the main current switching MOSFET, the only time this one is enabled is when either the voltage on the battery, all 
all three cells are above three volts. So it knows that it's got enough power to run the tool. As soon as the voltage drops below three volts in the cell, it will turn this MOSFET off and that will shut the tool off. Uh, but it also uses the MOSFET as the current detector because it measures the voltage across the MOSFET. And there are two positions for MOSFETs because they can can gang two in parallel. And to be honest, they should have done that with this one. That is the issue here. They could have used a lower resistance MOSFET with its on-state resistance, or they could have ganged two in parallel, and that would have solved that cutting out issue. The rest of the components around here, mainly three filter capacitors and uh, 1K little decoupling resistors from each of the cells, just to actually sort of monitor the voltage in all the cells. I can show you the schematic of this because I have the manufacturer's schematic for the other one. That's more or less everything there is to show in that anyway. After this, we will open up the tool and see what the construction is like inside. So here's a CM1033, very, it's a more common chip found in these battery packs. There's the three lithium cells. There's those three 1K resistors and three capacitors for monitoring the voltage across the cells so it can cut out when uh, either one reaches 4.2 volts or drops to 3 volts. Here are the two MOSFETs. The little dinky one is this one. And the big fat one is this one. So here's the power going out to the tool that is switched via this MOSFET. It has a resistor going to the input to tell it when charge voltage has been applied. There is also a diode there. And there is a sense resistor, a current sense resistor, but and a little tap-off to actually detect the voltage developed across that but what they've actually done they've taken that resistor over to the midpoint so it's actually measuring the voltage across this mosfet instead and that is how it senses the current uh, very straightforward but functional no balancing you wouldn't really expect balancing in something like this i shall put this cover back over before i end up shorting that out another thing could be a factor here this wire takes all the current uh, as does this tiny wire down here. Oh no, this is just a tap-off point. This one's taking the current. Uh, let's slide this back in. Slip. Okay. Let's take the battery out of the tool now, which will be working. I won't turn it on again. It's probably... I should have actually... Uh, I should have actually paused the video and actually recorded a separate bit of video with me running it because that was probably extremely noisy. My apologies for that. The charger itself is one of the super lightweight chargers. Puts out about 12 volts, says 800 milliamps. That's an unknown variable. 12.6 volts, says. And the it basically puts out a fixed current or it, it has a resistor to limit the current. Uh, and the charge control is actually done by the batteries themselves. Let's open this up. Let's take the disc off it. To take the disc off, you've got this little red ring that pulls up and you turn the wheel while pulling this up and it locks the wheel so you can then take it off. Like this. Three inch cut off discs are standard. They do a splendid job of slicing up the table. I've sliced the table on more than one occasion here. There is the, do I need to take that off? Yes, I do. I will need to take this off. Let's grab a screwdriver and whip the little protective plate off. So that's held on by three self-tapping screws. I could just pause at this point in time, couldn't I? I could pause. I'm not sure if there's anything to mark. Hold on. I shall get a pen and mark it. I shall use a red pen to mark the this and also this. Just to show know which way around that goes. Yeah, I'll just mark that as well. Just, you know, it's good to mark things before you take them apart. Otherwise, they may not go back together again. So we'll take that little guard plate off. That comes off. This comes off. Excellent. And uh, because there's quite a few screws. Oh, and they're torques. So I'm going to have to grab a screwdriver. Um, I'll pause momentarily while I do this. One moment, please. Okay, we're down to the last two screws. Also, there are, are these slide-on clips, which are very hard to remove. The best way to remove them is to take a screwdriver, and there's a little hole in the middle, and just put the screwdriver and leave it across like that, into that hole, until you can flick them off. Flick them off. So let's take out the last two screws here. And we'll see what exciting secrets it holds. I can already tell from rotating this that it's direct drive. There's no gearing that I can feel. That should be all the screws out. Is it just going to be a plain old switch? 
Is there any... Oh, this clip here. What about this thing? I would guess that's going to prise off. Is this where I break something? Oh, nope, nope. It's, it's on little metal pins. Now, is it going to come apart? Oh, oh yes. It's a micro switch. Oh, it's got a diode inside across the battery contacts. That's good because the power tool itself the, didn't. Here is the uh, little battery level indicator, which is just diodes, Zener diodes, LEDs and resistors. That is all it is. Strangely, it kind of like, there must be a capacitor in the output as well or something. Because, oh no, it's the what's being generated by the motor. Oh, there's the mechanism that uh, allows you to basically... What is that? Was that supposed to be like that? Don't really know. But anyway, that's the bit that locks it, isn't it? Where is the bit that locks it? Okay, I'm not sure. But anyway, there's the bit that's locking it. Was there another bit that just popped out there? I shall have a hunt about. I saw some little metal pins. Oh, no. Oh, it might have been. Oh, it is that. That is the locking bit, isn't it? Yeah, there's a little locking pin that goes into that when you actually lift it up. It When the motor popped out and in again, it uh, basically just nudged that. But there's a big fat bearing at the end, which is nice. That's quite good. Uh, the motor itself says RD12A, 12 volt. Wrong, da motor. 19500231228. Give you all the numbers. And just a, a, a switch, micro switch. It's worth mentioning that this trigger here, when you push it up, as well as pushing that switch in, it, if you press it up at the top, it latches over and it holds until you press it down, then it clicks back off again. But it is fundamentally just a, a micro switch, a fairly stiff micro switch, but it is high current. It's very basic inside, but ultimately simplicity is reliability. Well, that does feel quite stiff, actually. Why does it feel stiff? Is it bearing? No, I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe a tolerance thing. But there we have it. Uh, a reasonable enough little grinder. I'm not sure how well it would deal with heavy tasks. Well, it wouldn't deal with heavy tasks. But for light, just buffing the edges off. Maybe just small welds or soft materials. Or cutting open things like Tesla headlights and stuff like that. It would be perfect. That's what I used the last time to open the Tesla headlight. An angle grinder in the end. Uh, and it's kind of hobbled by these batteries. But having said that, they are compatible with other similar batteries sold for 12 volt eBay tools. So you might find a more beefy one. Incidentally, it says 1,200 milliamp hour cells. I haven't tested the capacity. That will also be a factor in how much current, depending on the quality of the cell, how much current they can deliver. It's possible that the voltage of the actual battery dropped down. It wasn't just sensing an overcurrent situation. But that's it. Uh, your little mini three inch angle grinder. It does seem to be a standard size. I'm used to the bigger ones. Uh, but uh, it has its uses. And it's functional, just perhaps not, uh, they've not done quite the right thing by shipping it out with the inadequate batteries. And I wonder how many people have bought these and had an issue. I didn't see any negative feedback, though. Maybe they're just working the basis if it's cheap enough, people won't bother returning it or won't complain. When this did arrive, I did notice that one of the contacts here had a little skid mark on it as if it had been in. Maybe this has been someone else beforehand. But that's it. A little mini angle grinder. It does work, but it may require uh, different batteries, which kind of defeats the purpose, really. But there we have it.